everybody. Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. I think we're about to be rolling live here. Give it a moment. Okay, I'm Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Tonight I'm talking about how does 5-HTP impact depression. I had some technical difficulties, so I'm coming on a little bit late. And maybe that was serendipitous. I don't know. I was starting to make a, a PowerPoint presentation about this, even though this presentation was not meant to be a PowerPoint presentation. Just kind of a general discussion. If you have any questions on this, send it to me. Um, just a little overview on depression. Uh, depression is a very common illness. Around 16% of the U.S. population will be depressed at any given time. And unfortunately, medical options do not always work, which is why this entity referred to as treatment-resistant depression is a big, big deal. Some estimates think that it's around half of those with depression have treatment-resistant depression. So these are people who have tried multiple pharmaceutical options and are still feeling depressed. In fact, the if you had to guess, and I'm leading you there, but if you had to guess what the largest cause of worldwide disability is, would you think that it's depression? I would not have, but in fact it is. So according to the World Health Organization, depression is the leading cause of disability. And good evening to everybody who's joining. Thank you so much. So. Depression is a very, very serious condition. Um, in many ways, it is a, it's a painful condition. It's a psychogenic type of pain, not meaning psychogenic as though it's, it's um, not real. It is literally a type of psychic pain. And for those who suffer with depression, lots of times they're looking for natural alternatives, which is why I'm talking about 5-HTP. I probably will loop this into a PowerPoint presentation eventually. Um, just so you can see some of the biochemistry and how close 5-HTP, which is a supplement, it's literally one biochemical step away from serotonin. And many of you have heard of serotonin specific, serotonin specific reuptake inhibitors and also the SNRI, uh, the serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Uh, these are common medications used in depression. And there's a lot of discussion in the literature whether 5-HTP, a natural supplement, should be used alongside uh, these SSRIs and SNRIs. I'm not telling you to do that. And there's a caveat in this. I'm not recommending that any of you take 5-HTP. I'm not saying that you should take 5-HTP with an antidepressant. If you look on Google, they're going to have all the alarms uh, going off saying don't do that. You may develop something called serotonin syndrome where you have too much serotonin in your brain and your body and you can develop diarrhea and uh, difficulty moving and heart palpitations and vomiting and potentially it can become fatal. So that's something that we all have to be aware of anytime you're taking serotonergic medications or supplements. But the reality is, I'm just telling you what is discussed in the literature, is that when people take SSRIs or SNRIs, the purpose is to keep more neurotransmitter. Let me see here. Well, the brain would be a bad example. But let's say this is a brain cell and this is a brain cell. The intent of these medications are to keep more neurotransmitter between the brain cells. If you have a lot more neurotransmitter floating out here, then basically these brain cells can talk to each other better and there could be more activation and more activation generally leads to improvements in mood, improvements in cognition, things of that nature. Now, we know after many decades that uh, when people say depression is a chemical problem, one would think, okay, you take an antidepressant and puts more chemical in your brain and then immediately you're gonna to start to feel better. The reality is it oftentimes takes a couple weeks and it takes a couple weeks because what we now know is that antidepressants largely exert their effect, at least the slow acting antidepressants like the ones I'm talking about, exert their effect through the hippocampus, the memory area. You've heard me talk about this. Basically depression is an illness of an imbalance between the fear center, which is chronically turned on, and the memory area, 
which is basically being fried by high cortisol and high adrenaline levels. It sets into motion this imbalance, which leads to more adrenal hormones, which further impair nerve growth in your hippocampus, where you should make about 700 new brain cells a day. These antidepressants, whether they are SSRIs or SNRIs or basically dopamine reuptake inhibitors, seem to allow for more neuronal growth in the hippocampus. And again, I'm not telling you to take this, I'm just describing the physiology. Basically, they lead to more neuronal growth in your hippocampus, which then has the effect of shutting off the fear center, which then allows for normal adrenal physiology and it kind of allows the brain to heal and allows frontal connections to grow back. And that seems to be part of the reason why people feel better. One thing that's discussed in the literature is that as people take these reuptake inhibitor medications, we have the probability of having low neurotransmitter levels. So meaning, if this is my brain cell and this is a brain cell, and out here we have more serotonin because of a reuptake inhibitor. What is a reuptake inhibitor? Basically, it's not allowing as much neurotransmitter to come back into this neuron, so there's more of it floating out here, so this guy gets stimulated. That's the reuptake inhibitor element. But the argument is, is that, well, you're keeping more, let's say in this situation, serotonin out here, but what about the precursors to serotonin, like tryptophan, like 5-hydroxytryptophan? And so they are arguing in the literature um, for the development of medications, which are basically slow-released 5-HTP, 5-HTP is a supplement, but they're trying to basically make it into a slow-release form so that they can then couple it with SSRIs because they're seeing that 5-HTP with certain medications may have a better therapeutic effect. If you look at this on Google, and I'm cautioning you, I'm not telling you to do this, I'm just telling you what's being discussed in the literature, um, this is the discussion. There are research articles. Uh, one is, oh gosh, I had it all here. Uh, one is the Asian Journal of Psychiatry in 2013 did a comparative study of the efficacy of L5-hydroxytryptophan, 5-HTP, and fluoxetine, fluoxetine is Prozac, which is an SSRI, in patients presenting with first depressive episode. Their conclusion, and I'm reading this verbatim, so look up the article if you want to, L5-HTP has definitely got antidepressant effect. That's a pretty bold statement in a literature, in a scientific article, just so you know. I'll repeat, L5-HTP has definitely got antidepressant effect in patients of depression. Antidepressant effect was seen within two weeks of treatment and was apparent in all degrees of depression. The therapeutic effic efficacy of L5-HTP was considered as equal to that of fluoxetine. That's pretty it's pretty definitive. So, and there are many other studies looking at depression with 5-HTP and creatine. Creatine is commonly used in, in weightlifters, but it actually helps with mitochondrial dynamics, which is why it probably helps with depression. And so, there's a lot of literature on 5-HTP. If you look on Google, they're going to say, don't take 5-HTP because it causes serotonin syndrome. And dear Lord, don't take it with, an, with a medication. And that's all well and good, but just know in the literature, they are looking at ways to boost serotonin precursors when people have depression, even if they're on medication. So again, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just telling you what's being discussed. 5-HTP is literally one biochemical step away from serotonin. 5-HTP stands for 5-hydroxytryptophan. And what is serotonin? Serotonin is 5-hydroxytryptamine. It's just one biochemical step through the what's called the AADC, aromatic amino acid decarboxylase enzyme that creates that conversion. So um, probably there's justification that I that I do a PowerPoint presentation just so you can see some of these illustrations. I think it may help, but um, I hope this is helpful in terms of the question of you know basically 5-HTP and its impact on depression. When you read on Google, they're going to say it doesn't have sustained effects for depression and uh, other elements, but uh, there's some interesting science out there. So I'll leave it at that. 
Hope you all have a lovely Tuesday night, and I will probably be back tomorrow with another broadcast. Okay.